We've got a loaded show here on Chicago Bears now, and it'll kick off with Colin Cowherd calling out Justin Fields and the Bears. I give my reaction to that on today's show. Also, Bleacher Report says that the Bears should be a team that could sign DeAndre Hopkins, and making a playoff push is the reason why I give my thoughts on that. Rookie Tyler Scott hyped up DJ Moore as this team's number one wide receiver. Scott did an interview with NBC Sports Chicago. Want to hit some of those talking points. And then toward the end of the show, I want to give you guys some shout outs for giving me a follow on the new threads app. I'm over 200 now. So appreciate you guys. A um, lot of new followers. So I'm going to go kind of rapid fire at the end. So if you want to shout out, stick with us here on today's show. And uh, of course, today's show uh, is going to start right now. Before we react to Colin Cowherd, do want to shout out our presenting sponsor today. That, of course, is Manscaped. Get the best men's grooming products right now with code BEARS20 at manscaped.com. Go check out Manscaped. Okay, Colin Cowherd uh, on radio and TV yesterday says there's no more excuses for the Bears and Justin Fields here in 2023. Most of it was around Justin Fields. So let's just dissect here, react to what he said. I there was more to what he said than what I'm going to present today, but uh, can't do it all. Here's what uh, Cowherd uh, said here. He said, it should be noted Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert behind atrocious offensive lines were great quickly. The Bears offensive line last year was middle of the pack. Sorry, it wasn't atrocious. The O-line is not a disaster, he says. They've hit on a couple young ones. The tight end and wide receiver group has four really good players. I won't count Chase Claypool. So Darnell Mooney, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, and Robert Tanyan. Uh, backs are more than serviceable. Good players. No more excuses. So a lot to unpack there. Let me just get this right off the bat. I like Robert Tanyan, but relax. Like, he's not a great piece. He's a good number two tight end. So I think he can give you some uh, juice in the red zone. But let, let's not include him as, like, a major reason to why – Justin Fields should take off. I also disagree with the notion that the Bears' O-line was middle of the pack last year. I know there's some loose metrics that suggest that, uh, but if you turn on the tape, it, it, it's bad. Like, I think Justin Fields' ability to escape some sacks helped grade out the Bears' offensive line better. So uh, you've got that. But I do agree with Cowherd that I think there are scenarios where you could come up with legitimate reasons or quote-unquote excuses for why 2023 uh, – could be not to the level that we want it. But for the most part, I would agree if guys stay healthy, like there are no more excuses. It's the third year in the NFL for Justin Fields, second in this offense. Ryan Poles did a good job of building around Fields. I don't think it's a finished product offensively with the uh, with the players. I definitely don't think the O-line's a finished product, but I think it should be better. The receivers definitely should be better. Tanyan does help the tight end room. I do think the backs are serviceable. So yes, I do think the Bears have enough around Justin Fields. Uh, right now. Uh, I don't agree with everything Colin said there, and especially considering last week he picked the Bears to finish last in the North, so now he's saying no more excuses when a week ago he had them uh, bringing up the rear of the division, but um, this team should be much better. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The question is, how much better will they actually be? Does Justin Fields have enough help this year? Do you uh, agree with that notion. Type Y for yes, type in for no. I do think he has enough help. I don't think this offense is absolutely loaded, uh, but I do think it's uh, it's much better than it was last year when uh, guys like Dante Pettis were having to play the majority of snaps sometimes. So uh, I do think Fields has uh, at least adequate help here in 2023. More from Cowherd here that I want to unpack. Uh, he kind of started talking about other quarterbacks. He said, I watched this with Cam Newton. He was a highlight guy and a YouTube guy, but struggled with basic stuff. Fans and media fall for sensational. Nothing against Cam, but he could never complete enough passes. He never had back-to-back -back winning seasons. Uh, let me give you three quarterbacks who had a lot of spectacular and struggled completing passes and all turned the corner. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and Lamar Jackson. They were highlight quarterbacks, YouTube guys. Then by year two, year three, they become more or they become accurate throwers of the football. And we've talked about this before with Allen and Hurts specifically, that uh, you look at their first two seasons as passers, right? Fields holds his own here. Now, the touchdown to interception ratio isn't quite as good. Uh, but remember, Jalen Hurts, 
still had an elite offensive line his first couple of years. So he definitely had that. Um, Allen, uh, probably closer to Fields in terms of what he had around him, but I would say had a little bit better weapons. But you look at the QB uh, passer rating, I mean, they're all in the same tier, right? So uh, completion percentage, Fields is actually higher uh, than Allen and Hurts through two seasons. Uh, and as rushers, uh, Fields is actually superior than Allen and Jalen Hurts. So the point of this being, and to Cowherd's credit, he does kind of open the door for this, is that there is an opportunity and evidence that Fields can turn the uh, corner as a passer. And guess what Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts got before the season that they took off? They got a number one receiver. The Bills traded for Stephon Diggs. All of a sudden, uh, Josh Allen is a all-pro level quarterback. Uh, Jalen Hurts gets A.J. Brown. All of a sudden, he's uh, an MVP candidate and playing in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying this is going to be a Super Bowl contender. I'm not saying Fields is going to be MVP because, again, in Hurts' case, I've said it. That's an all-pro offensive line. I think the Bears' line will be better, but not to that level. Uh, but Justin Fields has a chance to take off the season because of the D.J. Moore effect. We've seen it with several young quarterbacks who have been on this trajectory of, uh, we don't know if they're the guy. They get the number one guy. Boom, they're the guy that next season. So, uh, obviously, it's not a guarantee. We have, Fields has to go out there and prove it, but we've seen numerous examples of this in the past, and I think there's a good chance it'll happen for Justin. If you believe in Justin Fields, type JF1 in the comments right now. I just think, like, the skill set is too strong. Rocket arm. The he, Again, I, I've stated this. I'll stand by it. I think he's already the best running quarterback in the NFL. Uh, I think that uh, DJ Moore's impact will be huge, and uh, I think it's going to translate to a big season for number one. Shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. It's Smooth Sack Summer, and there's only one product to give you a smooth sack. You guys know what I'm talking about downstairs. The Lawnmower 4.0 going to trim things up just like your front yard. Going to trim up uh, all those grimy hairs that are sitting down there. Keep things nice and smooth around your sack. And we're giving you a discount as well. Promo code BEARS20 to get 20% off at manscaped.com. I'm really a big fan of this product. It's got four adjustable guards. Kind of allows you some versatility on uh, or flexibility, I should say, in terms of how much you leave down there when you use this product wireless charging station, water resistance, so you can use this in the shower as well. Get started with Manscaped today. You will never look anywhere else for your men's grooming products. It's manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20, to get 20% off plus free shipping. Okay, I found this pretty interesting, and I wanted to talk about it. Bleacher Report dropped an article of five teams that should sign DeAndre Hopkins to make said teams a playoff contender, and they mentioned the Bears as one of those teams. So a lot to unpack here. Here's Maurice Mouton who wrote this article. He said, compared to last offseason, the Bears have done a much better job of strengthening field supporting cast, and it should pay off in the upcoming season. But they can put the cherry on top of their efforts with the addition of Hopkins. Hopkins would be a decent uh, complement to Moore on the perimeter, which would allow Darnell Moody to work primarily out of the slot. Chicago doesn't have to wait for Claypool to find his footing in the offense with enough cap space to sign Ho Hopkins. And... Look, that's the dilemma, right? DeAndre Hopkins is a better player than Chase Claypool. I don't think anyone's going to dispute that. You could argue Hopkins is, you know, on the back nine of his career. He's not what he was. I, I still think for one season he's a better player than Claypool. But he's much older, like I mentioned. And I just don't think the Bears are going to punt on Claypool after trading a second-round pick, which, by the way, ended up being the 32nd pick this early. Like, I, I just think that would be unwise because if you sign Hopkins, right, and he's your number two outside guy, and Mooney's your primary slot, you're basically already giving up on Claypool because there's just not enough room in an offense, which, by the way, that's still going to run the football quite a bit for four receivers to get a lot of touches. It's just not It's just not realistic. I mean, e even the, the your top three right now, more Mooney and Claypool, it's likely one of those three, it, it, it becomes a clear three, uh, to my point, right? Like, you add a Hopkins in here, uh, Claypool or Mooney, whoever it is, they're, they're kind of getting phased out uh, in, in all likelihood. Now, let me be clear. I would not say no to this. If you sign DeAndre Hopkins, hey, you're trying to improve your team this year. I, I'm all for that. But I also just want to see if Claypool can be the guy they traded for, right? Like I did a video last week, or I think it was Sunday, uh, about why we should not give up on Claypool yet. He had a really good first two years in Pittsburgh. Uh, I get there were some immaturity issues that going on there, but, like, you traded a second for this guy. Like, you sign Hopkins, you're already conceding defeat in that trade. Um, you know, I, I just – I don't know if I'm ready to go that route if I'm Chicago. Again, I'm not saying no to DeAndre Hopkins, but just know there are effects of making this move 
uh, that uh, go beyond just what's going to happen on the football field. So would you sign DeAndre Hopkins? Type S for sign, P for pass. I'd still consider it, despite everything I'm saying. Like, he's a damn good player, uh, and the Bears have the money to do it. They could outbid on other teams, and if Hopkins is chasing money over everything else, they can offer more than anyone. But uh, just know that uh, if you sign him, there are ramifications. Okay, Tyler Scott did an interview with DJ or about DJ Moore and other topics with NBC Sports Chicago. Credit them uh, for getting the scoop here. Uh, but uh, I, I found this line interesting. DJ Moore is everything advertised and more. Because obviously a lot of hype around the new number one receiver. Here's what Tyler Scott had to say. He says he plays with such calmness to him, just the control to him. And football players, you know, you kind of know what that looks like. And he just kind of plays under control. But it's not necessarily like he's playing slower behind. It's just he kind of plays like he knows what he's doing. You can tell he's experienced in what he does. He's just playing at a different level than everybody. And look, that makes sense. This is a guy with several thousand yard seasons in the NFL. I think DJ Moore will change the trajectory of this team and of this offense. Like you needed a number one receiver. DJ Moore's been that. Uh, I, I talked earlier when we were reacting to Cowherd's statements that Young quarterbacks need that number one receiver. We've seen proof of guys taking off because of that. I think DJ Moore will change this team and change uh, Justin Fields uh, and how uh, you know outsiders view him because I just think he's going to help. Like, how could he not? I mean, we heard throughout OTAs and uh, minicamp, like, that trust was already built. Like, Justin is looking his way because he knows where he's going to be. So uh, I'm excited to see how this all unfolds. Uh, guys around him have already, you know, built that respect toward DJ Moore, like a young player in Tyler Scott. And that's something else Moore's going to provide too. Like he's a guy that these young players can look up to and like, hey, I can become an impact player quickly in the NFL. Tyler Scott needs to be soaking up everything that DJ Moore is doing and preaching and saying. So uh, I just think that his impact, not only in terms of statistics on, on the field and with Justin is going to be huge, but with some of these young guys and how they can develop as well. Now, how many touchdowns do you think DJ Moore is going to have here in 2023? Let me know down in the comments section below how many touchdowns for DJ Moore this season. All right, guys, I'm going to give some shout outs for our new Threads followers. And look, uh, I'll be honest, I can't figure out how they order the new followers. Like, I don't know if it's alphabetical or what. So I'm just going to rip off a ton here. Uh, shout out Jeremiah, Josh Two, the Osipoff Group, Danny Silva, Adrenaline, Kevin, Dylan, Jonathan, James, Louis, T.O., Antonio James, uh, Antonio J. I should say, uh, Dox Patel. We got Nate Brewer, uh, Open, Telson Bess, Adam Simpson, Michael Rodriguez, uh, Devin Nutter, Julian Gallardo, uh, Nathaniel Rivera, D Diego, Jennifer Davis, Eduardo, Andre, Jackie, Peyton, John, Daniel, Tim, Josh, The Urban. Uh, Uzi, we got Preston, Kane, Capnock, Free Thugger, uh, Corn Stephen Cornelius, uh, Cyrus Zerby, Abdul Karium, uh, we got uh, Nino, Kyle, Maurice, Josh, Jeremy, Manny, Jeffrey, Hops, Kevin, Aiden, Jose, Kyle, Aaron, G. Carl, Cohen, so many more to get to. I just ripped off like 60. If I missed you, uh, I apologize. Uh, Message me uh, on threads or thread me, whatever the, the, the lingo is on this new app, uh, and uh, I'll try to get you a shout-out on a future show. But shout-out to everyone who's followed me. If you haven't, at HGramNFL. Let's try and get to 1,000 followers.